through the tall trees, Solomon caught glimpses of creatures he still had not been able to fathom. Arvum's scorching sun broke through the canopy of the forest, casting dark, monstrous shadows on the thorny foliage as the thump of the march continued. He had spent seven cruel days hidden in the company of the barbaric enemy. By the grace of the Emperor, he had always been positioned on the comparative safety of the flanks during their maraud through the woodland province of Jungsburg. He had remained inside the clandestine disguise of the armor and mask whilst being swept from one mass genocide to the next. For the last two days, he had marched alongside the rear guard battalion known to its followers as the Vessels of Bacchus. In this time, he had seen acts of pain and suffering inflicted on his kinsfolk unbelievable in nature. He had witnessed entire settlements sacked and raped by an army that only desired to soak in the pleasure of the world's misery. He had been party to the desecration of the god Emperor and the missionary work of the Ecclesiarchy when the Imperial Hospital of Twinsgate was razed to its foundations by a platoon of traitor tanks. It was impossible for Solomon to forget the sight of the child soldiers welded to the pintle-mounted guns on top of the vehicles, singing their own infantile lullabies of war with maniacal joy as they fired into the flaming building and the burning civilians within. He remembered how the captured preachers and Medicaid personnel of the hospital were relieved of their limbs and rolled down a nearby rocky cliff face by bored grunts who wagered on which of the screaming torsos would crack apart first. But nothing could prepare Solomon for the warp-spawned monsters that ripped their way into his world and bolstered the burgeoning ranks of the arch-enemy. There were giant, multi-limbed beasts that licked the air with serpentine tongues whilst they scuttled at the front of the advance, exuding a pheromone cloud that only intensified the hedonism. From dark, unspeakable rituals came the Maidens of Excess, slender, intoxicating creatures that trilled their praises to Slanesh. Solomon found it impossible to ascertain their true form as dark powers cloaked them in shifting visions of beauty and revulsion. Corrupted guard soldiers would bathe and leer at the androgynous demons. Their lusting never quenched even when their appetites always ended with some part of their bodies being removed by the snapping clawed hands of the maidens. The abhorrent creature that ever followed behind Solomon was the same hysterical insect beast he had seen when the injured caravan had taken camp outside of his farmstead. A barbed lash was stitched into the chitinous shell of one of its stalked forearms and the creature clearly enjoyed its role as taskmaster. The wounded and sick would feel the horrific bite of the whip every time they failed to keep step, or simply for its own twisted amusement. Solomon thanked the throne for the plundered flak armor that absorbed most of the insect's attacks. He also mouthed a silent prayer for the iron mask that protected his weeping, untainted face from being revealed. Solomon's world had become a bastardized form of sight through the narrow eye slits of the mask. Peripheral vision was stripped away, and the damned weight of the iron made turning his head an unbearable task. He was forever staring forward, forever marching alongside the raiders that devastated the land he had called home for fifty Terran years. He likened the blinkered view of his world to the coin-operated pick viewers he used as a child on the Cardinal Sea Promenade. It was a good way to distance himself from the surrounding madness. It was the only way. Vicious knots of vines that twined and wrapped around wide trees snagged on Solomon's ragged, filthy clothing, slicing into his skin as he attempted to push past. He slung the looted auto rifle he was holding, unsheathed his bill-hooked blade with his free hand, and began cutting a path through the dense forest all the while hearing his looming insect handler chitter and threaten with its own swipes behind. The march continued until Arvum's burning sun had set over the sparse awning, the vibrant red sky of day melting into the brackish brown of dusk. Solomon dropped to his knees, suppressing a scream of agony when his handler gave him one more lash for good measure across the back of his calves, emitting a clicking vocalization the creature skittered off towards the forward ranks, a stinking yellow trail oozing onto the forest floor from underneath its segmented carapace. Solomon sat back in the spot he fell. He felt the cold, damp moss soak through his clothes as he rubbed his cramping legs 
and tenderly pulled up the bottom of his trousers to inspect his latest wounds. The barbed whip had caused three deep cuts that traversed both legs, fresh, warm blood running into his boots. He gripped his calves and tried to stem the bleeding, watching the reddening of infection already setting in. Tearing two thin strips from his tunic, he wrapped them tightly around his thin legs before picking up his rusted auto rifle. Solomon had never had to fire a weapon in his life, for the life of a field teller on Arvum was as close to peace you could find in the galaxy. There would be the seasonal leech fly infestation in the animal holdings, or Maya rat swarm that would render a harvest unusable, but that was about the extent of their troubles. That was until the corruption of chaos arrived in system and tore that piece apart. Feeling the plastil rifle heavy in his arms was nearly as alien to him as anything he had witnessed over the last week. The weapon had been thrust unceremoniously into his hands by a wizened old armorer when leaving the camp at the farm, along with three magazines of ammunition, a toothless grin, and a suspiciously slimy handshake. He brought the rifle up to his shoulder and imagined drumming a whole magazine into the insectoid beast. How the recoil would surge through his entire body. It made him feel good. Powerful. A warrior. He quickly dropped his aim when he heard the cracking of feet on underbrush and felt the presence of something standing next to him. With a great effort, Solomon turned and tilted his head upwards. A stunningly beautiful man dressed only in a golden weave robe stood over him, staring down with white, blue eyes. He presented as a member of misplaced royalty in this sea of unwashed foot soldiers and monsters of the warp. The stranger held out a perfectly manicured hand and ushered him to stand with the grace and poise of high nobility, even inclining his head in a slight bow of respect when Solomon took his offer to rise. A strange, comforting sensation flowed through their touch. Solomon was led slowly towards the main throng of soldiers and worshippers that had congregated inside a wide clearing of the forest. Tiny, huffing familiars no larger than the canopy-dwelling marmosets above shouldered minuscule sacks and followed behind the beautiful man. The man stopped, released his hold on Solomon's clammy hand, and leisurely turned so they faced one another. The two men stood the same height, but there was an air of bravado that made the regal stranger appear much larger in stature. A perfect straightness in his posture. A chiseled, well-coiffed head held high on a slender neck. The grandiose figure exhaled a breath and derobed slowly, all the while staring at Solomon with unblinking eyes that seemed pure white in the dull wash of the moonlight. He folded his golden robe with perfect practice technique, and passed it to a second group of familiars who squabbled and fought over who would carry the garment away. The naked man immediately began to maneuver Solomon's arms, head, and legs into a multitude of positions, never satisfied with the results as he cursed under his breath, pacing around him in a circle. After an hour of relentless levering and posing, the stranger clicked his long fingers, and the sack carrying familiars gathered around his feet clucking as they climbed on each other like circus performers, making an organic ladder to their master's hand. First, an oval plate was passed upwards that the naked man took with his left hand. A small leather bag was next, which was placed onto the ceramic dish. The stranger untied the pouch and let the contents spill onto the indented plate. Paint brushes. The small, bristled brushes of an artisan lay on the palette. An impossibly old woman approached, a canvas and easel far too big for her misshapen frame tied across her back. The simian servant who stood at the top of the organic ladder screeched and grabbed at the air wildly when the artist plucked him from the group and tightened a squeeze around its midriff. A squirt of thick gore plopped onto the palate as the artist milked the flailing animal. The painter tossed the emptied lifeless beast to the ground picked up a fine-haired brush and began to swirl and blend the blood and juice, expectorating long strands of saliva into the palate to loosen the mix. A group of doting underlings enclosed on Solomon, carefully adorning his armor and iron mask with long white bird feathers that adhered to his person with a putrid-smelling tar. He was made to stand motionless as the painter worked. 
Every brushstroke upon the canvas was meticulous and executed to perfection. Every sublime shape and line was measured artistry. Throughout the pained stillness, Solomon could hear a frenzy of commotion behind him. The infernal sounds of laughter that accompanied the march this far was now transforming into a full orchestration of pain. An orgy of death and incantations was happening mere meters from Solomon, yet still he faced forward for the artist to complete his work. Something fleshy and turgid rutted against his back, but it was quickly shooed away by one of the artist's retinue, the painter screaming in irritation at the interruption. A wind of aromatic incense overwhelmed Solomon's senses as the artist allowed the old crone to rub his body with the oil. The man composed himself, waved the old lady away, and recommenced with his great work. A small group of onlookers had now gathered behind the canvas, hollering and gasping with open-mouthed awe to the methodical artist feverishly capturing every moment of the bacchanal. Emerald green sparks of light illuminated the dark woodland in flashing still-frame images, and the sudden heat of a blazing furnace seared into Solomon's back. Through the mask he saw the artist drop his palette and brush, his sheening body trembling in pure anticipation. The ancient woman by the artisan's side turned the canvas. It was a masterwork of misery, a beautifully rendered piece of art that Solomon damned himself for admiring. In the foreground stood the masked creature he had become, the likeness striking in its realism. His arms were held wide from the body, hands painted with the palms facing the stars. It reminded Solomon of the religious imagery that had always been prevalent across the world of Arvum. From beautiful sketches of the god emperor that lined imperial cult texts and prayer books, to the stories of the long dead gods of terror he heard whispers of when working in the fields. But this work held no warmth of the Emperor's holy light, or an omnipotent deity's blessing. This was demonic blood art that shimmered and bubbled in the green firelight, dancing off the stretched canvas in the flickering glow. Bleak images of ritualistic sacrificial murder covered the remaining artwork, a tapestry of torture so intricate it was almost as Solomon was looking through a glass window and into the very madness of the warp itself. Flocks of squawking birds exploded skyward from their nests as a sonorous rumble shook and bowed the trees to their roots. The earth tremored underneath Solomon, threatening to split open at his feet. More clashing colors bloomed around the thicket clearing, igniting the area in a myriad of brilliant purples, pinks, and green. Satisfied the artist did not require his muse any longer, Solomon slowly turned on his heels and his heart stopped when he finally laid his eyes on the nightmare that was happening behind him. Under a colossal bonfire of cremated bodies, an army of zealots a hundred deep knelt and kissed at the earth. The burnt remains seemed to writhe with life. Green flames roasted the skin from their bones, popping and crackling like cindered wood. More jerking movements from the mass of dead heretics. A fluctuating tidal surge of blackened limbs that reached and fell. The bodies were not alive. The monster that birthed from the bones and ash was. Bursting from the crest of the bonfire, a greater demon of Slanesh roared its arrival. The horned abomination snapped its bovine jaws, its four limbs scything the air as it acclimated to its new material surroundings, and to the battalion of loud, worshipping soldiers who thrust their weapons into the air in salute. Unburning flames licked up clawed reptilian legs as the demon gracefully descended the mountain of corpses in long, sensual strides. As a payment to their dark god, slavering hedonists offered the gifts of flesh and death. Whimpering men and women of the Ecclesiarch lay in a row, each one bound spread eagle to four metal stakes that had been hammered into the thick ashy dirt at the base of the bonfire. They screamed for mercy when the monster towered over them. They screamed for absolution to the whistle of bone flutes and the beat of primal drums. They just screamed when the creature skewered each one in turn from bowel to brain. Solomon Dry heaved inside the mask. He feared the mere hint of repulsion would alert suspicion, but there wasn't enough food in his belly to vomit anyhow. The artist had returned to his frantic painting, 
immortalizing the arrival of the monstrosity that now feasted on a mess of gushing remnants that hung limply from its claws. The naked artisan took a step back to admire his finished magnum opus and bathe in the total adoration of his familiars, their squeals of delight the keenest, purest pleasure he could feel. He turned to face his audience, closed his perfect eyes, and embraced the rapturous applause. He died quick and messy, as whistling las bolts tore through his lean ribs, igniting the scented oils that sheened across his body. The artisan's retinue watched in despair, wailing in collective lamentation when their master folded into the mud. A bright star burst from the treetops as a flare round detonated. A moment of stunned silence filled the entirety of the forest, before a hail of coordinated las fire exploded from the outskirts of the clearing. Heavy ordnance zeroed the bonfire and cultists that continued praying to their dark god, disintegrating the ritual in a creeping firestorm. The gigantic four-armed demon screamed in bestial ecstasy as las bolts and hard rounds winged it from all directions. Solomon dived into a shallow ravine, stumbling and rolling down the mud bank as shards of light zipped overhead in trained bursts of gunfire. This was no militia outfit, Solomon thought as he held his auto gun tight to his palpitating chest. This was the guard. Over the crack of Laz rifles and roar of returning counterfire, a cyclic, clanking stomp drew near. A tiger-striped sentinel broke into the clearing, emerging from the shadows like a gigantic jungle cat, with its auto cannon spitting brutal death into the front ranks of the enemy. Heavy shells thumped into the dead artist's retinue as the sentinel raked the battlefield, turning the familiars inside out and the old woman into a bloody mist, her decapitated head rolling into the ravine to stop by Solomon's foot. Solomon had little time to duck as the androgynous maidens leapt over the ravine, moving at incredible speed to meet their attackers in bloody melee. The armoured sentinel repositioned its firing arc and attempted to train its heavy weapon on the acrobatic demonettes that weaved and shimmered in the beam of the vehicle's searchlight. The autocannon fired, chewing up the forest floor and pulping surrounding trees, but having no effect on the trilling creatures that were nearly upon the armoured vehicle. The walker vented thick exhaust smoke as it backpedalled into the shadowy forest. Flamer troops pushed past to cover its retreat, hosing the screeching demonettes with burning Prometheum. Another flare burst turned night into day. Twisting rockets screamed over Solomon's head towards a squad of traitors attempting to assemble a bipod-mounted heavy weapon. The warheads detonated on target and turned the forest floor into a quagmire of slush and blood. A spirited war cry from hundreds of Laz men echoed throughout the forest when they charged from the darkness, their barking commissars ordering them all to fight to the last man. Ferocious gunfire cut the first rank of charging guard to pieces. The second rank filed into the clearing and vaulted their dead and dying comrades, snapping off rounds and lobbing grenades. Hooded, heretical thralls rushed to meet them in open combat, madly swinging scimitar blades and discharging their antique lead throwers. They proved no match for the proficiency and firepower of the guard in close combat. The pheromone-emitting chimeric monsters fared better. A band of the horrors flanked from the west of the Imperial Charge, cutting and disemboweling their human enemies with ease, noxious, hypnotic clouds swirling behind. The handful of soldiers not dead or desperately holding their organs inside their bodies shuffled in all directions, entranced by the mirages of pleasure fabricated within the wake of the terrors. The intoxicated troopers died with stupid, drunken smiles across their faces when traitor infantry closed the distance and ran them through with crude bayonets. Blaring Imperial battle hymns from its distorted Vox speakers, the armoured sentinel smashed into the fray once more, the rhythmic crump of the auto cannon matching the timing of its heavy pneumatic steps. A platoon of traitor guards welcomed the pain of death with gleeful open arms laughing and pleasuring themselves as limbs and chunks of meat ripped from their bodies. Solomon cowered and tucked his quaking body into the long reeds that lined the ravine. Thumping blood pounded in his ears. He struggled to catch his breath, suffocating panic gripping his heart and lungs. A frag grenade impacted nearby that left him deaf in the moment. He felt choked by fear now, like invisible fingers around his throat that were never going to let go. He needed to be free of the damned mask. 
He unbuckled the straps and let the iron visor thud to the ground with a gasping breath. The ringing in his ears faded, and it was shocking how much being enclosed in the mask had hidden from Solomon. Not only in vision, but sound also. He cupped his ears as sibilant bolts fizzed from every direction, smacking into thick trees and showering him with Laz heated bark. Solomon lifted his head above the reed line and risked a brief view of the battle. In the descending flare light, a grizzled commissar launched himself into a group of heretics with a bellowed prayer and a chainsaw biting, their armor no more than wet paper to the revving teeth of the weapon. Flanking the commissar were ochre, poncho-clad troopers that called out targets, cheering as they scored kills with every volley from their shouldered rifles. The guard was winning this fight. Solomon wanted to stand and surrender, but his legs were jellied and useless. He wanted to shout for salvation, but his tongue was swollen. He wanted to crawl out of the ravine, but a hard, steel-capped kick to his ribs sent him spiraling back into the shallow stream. The assailant jumped into the water and lunged at Solomon with a punch knife wedged between his fingers. Solomon pivoted onto his back, raised the water-clogged autogun from his side, and pulled the trigger. The soldier wavered for a second, hacked a spray of blood, and fell face first into the stream his militarum fatigue stained red from the giant exit wound in his spine. His first true kill. A soldier of the Imperium. On the urgent vox halid orders of the commissariat, a focused swarm of shells, bolts and rockets traced across the clearing. The greater demon had been waiting with a patience at odds with its monstrous form, savoring the furious violence of battle from the rear. Now, its anticipation sated. The giant monster barreled into the fighting lines of the Imperial Guard with a devastating speed and ferocity that was almost impossible to follow. The tide of war turned in a minute of whirling savagery. Battle-hardened veterans of countless heroic campaigns were chewed to mushy sludge in a heartbeat. Desperation spread like a quick-acting nerve gas across the field. Soldiers of the Imperium, their minds full with fear and hopelessness broke from cover and began to flee from the battle. They turned on each other with fists and blade as morale snapped like brittle bones, officers fighting like animals to keep control of their routing squads. Retreating guardsmen dropped everywhere, executed by enemy fire or by their own superiors for cowardice. Solomon saw the sentinel at the tree line rock under the weight of the demons that scaled its frame. The crewmen tried to shake them loose, frantically swiveling the machine and strafing with panicked clumsy movements that only crushed and maimed his fellow guardsmen underfoot. The walker detonated in a superheated ball of white flame when the climbing monsters sliced into the vehicle's ammunition housing. Huge secondary explosions ruptured through the reserve troops when the wrecked sentinel's rocket pods cooked off in the inferno. The commissars had gotten their wish. The guard had fought to the last man. Solomon watched the greater demon hoist the lone survivor into the air with ease. Tendons stretched and snapped when the creature slowly tore his chain blade wielding arm from its socket, relishing in the human's agony and dangling him like a wooden toy before smashing the screaming man on a rock like an egg. The battle was over and Solomon was alive. Hundreds of corpses both human and heretic carpeted the glade, yet he drew breath. The husks of dead demons sparked and returned to the immaterium in flashes of pink and orange flame. But Solomon remained. He knelt and drank from the stream like a dog, unperturbed by the dead soldier's blood that flowed within the current of the water and tainted his mouth with a coppery aftertaste. A familiar chittering noise was quickly nearing, a sound of vile insect legs weaving through the leafy underbrush. Solomon scrambled to find the iron mask, sweeping clumps of reeds and tall grass aside to the encroaching sound of a whipping lash. A metal, cherubic face smiled up from the sodden mud bank. Solomon returned the smile. The vessel of Bacchus's number had been decimated by the night raid, but it did little to slow their march through the wild woods the following day. Solomon's insect handler, 
now fat from its morning feed, lethargically spurred his charges forward with half-hearted threats burping from its sphincter mouth. How Solomon longed to put a bullet into that disgusting beast, watch it squirm as its life pissed from the hole. Not yet, he thought to himself. Wait. He understood what it was like now, to feel a weapon buck in his hands and make something die. Too bad it had to be the Imperial soldier who took his murderer's virginity, and not this foul spawn of the warp. Solomon caught himself smiling under the mask as he remembered the rearward force of the rifle. It felt good. Powerful. He had survived another night, and this gave him hope. Even when the battalion arrived at the edge of the wood and thrust into the bloody siege of Arvum's capital city.